What is going on, friends? Hipster Punchy here. I know it's been a while. I've uh, I, I kept track a little bit here. Uh, it's not been a good pandemic for me. It's been actually pretty rough mentally. I've ha I had a few really bad um, episodes, so uh, that's kind of pushed me back. And at one point, I actually had an, a summer school semester, um, which was very condensed, and I think kind of led to some of those issues that I just mentioned. Also, uh, since then, I've actually gotten a couple um, gigs working, editing for companies to add to my resume, because for those who don't know, I am actually going to school for TV and film. That's actually one of my passions and something um, that I do take very seriously and something that can be on my resume that's not self-produced um, actually helps me in the long run as far as getting work and um, getting to know people and just being able to do what I've wanted to do since I was pretty young. So it, that's why there hasn't been videos, but I'm actually in a pretty good headspace right now. I um, I actually probably could have done videos a few weeks ago, but I was kind of wrestling with um, how to come back and what to come back with um, because there's a lot that's been going on and there's a lot in film that could relate to what's been going on um, with the protests going on, with um, last month was Pride Month, I was debating what to do for that. I actually almost did a video during that. Um, again, these are things that I actually um, do pay attention to politically. Um, So I, I was, but I also wanted to be very careful. I didn't want to step outside of my lane with that. But I don't know. I didn't know which direction to go. I came to a decision uh, to do a series, and this is what this video is the first of, um, but do a series on the films of Costa Gavras, at least the ones that are in the Criterion collection. Um, for two reasons. One, um, politically, I think some of his films actually fit now. Uh, also, I'm doing this as a series of films, and it's actually prepping me for a future set of videos that I will be doing, uh, which is going to be on the entirety of the Ingmar Bergman box set, which, uh, let's be honest, that one's probably not going to be posted anytime soon. There's almost 40 films plus special features, and I want to read through the booklet as well. So um, that's going to be more a lengthy labor of love that will probably around the fall time is when I think that'll be out. Um, considering the fact that I'm probably going to be um, remote in everything but my job, I'm going to have ample opportunity to watch that and um, make that video. So I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that one. Uh, I'm just not quite there yet. I'm I'm honestly not even a quarter of the way through the movies. Again, there's a lot. And some of the movies have other versions. And I, I want to watch everything on that box set. Uh, so for now, I'm doing a sidebar into this video series. And I wanted to figure out how I wanted to approach this. I was actually having doubt about what to do. Um, I actually decided to ask probably one of the nicest people in the film community, Dice K. Bapu, uh, which direction to go. I, I didn't know, do I release this as one video and just do Z, uh, The Confession, um, State of Siege, and Missing, or do I section them off as individual videos? Uh, he made the suggestion to do this as a um, individual four video series and then do them as a playlist. Um, at least in his mind, in his view, that actually makes it easier for the viewer. And uh, the way he actually explained it to me, it makes a lot of sense. Thank you to Dice K. If you have not heard of his channel, it's Dice K. Vipu. Uh, probably one of the best, if not the best, film YouTuber on there. The first one that I've chosen for this series is Z. Um, now, a little back, short background on Costa Gavras. He was born in Greece. Um, his father was actually a resistance fighter um, during World War II, who was also part of the Communist Party. Uh, this is something that would bite him after the war, uh, because the second the war was over, anyone who was communist in Greece was persecuted, and his father did have to leave the country. This would have some ramifications on Costa Gavras as well. Uh, once he got to where he was um, about to 
enroll in higher education, this limited his options a little bit with what he could and couldn't do as far as where to go school-wise. I mean, Greece wasn't going to let him go to college there because of his father's links to the Communist Party. And this was still during McCarthyism, so he was not going to get the student visa for the United States. He decided to go to France, where he was learning during the start of the French New Wave. Um, he's not connected to the French New Wave, neither the East or West Bank, but he was releasing French-produced films during that same time. Um, his skew more political, but he does like to um, liven it up a little bit to kind of keep an audience's interest during the two hours of the film. Uh, he basically has gone on to say that he thinks that a film shouldn't just be giving a political speech to an audience member. They have to entertain the audience member. And he does this in a variety of ways with the films that I'm going to mention in this series, uh, starting with Z. Now, for those who don't know, Z actually, it was his breakout film internationally. It actually won an Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Picture, which it was the, also the first film to be nominated for both Best Picture and Best Foreign Language Picture, which other films have been since then, but we only just recently had a film win both awards with Parasite, which is going to be on the collection soon. But um, Z was actually the first film. The release is presently out of print, unfortunately. Uh, I hope we do get a upgrade at some point. I'm not sure what the status is, but this was nominated for Best Picture along with winning Best Foreign Language Film. And also during that Oscar season, Costa Gavras was nominated for Best Director. Uh, so it was actually a pretty good award season for that film. Now, as far as, and I've mentioned this, uh, the film, his films, at least the ones spotlighted in the collection, uh, have all been about a specific event in history, um, politically motivated events. Um, some include assassinations, largely assassinations, um, or some form of persecution by corrupt government officials. And he does leave a little bit vague about the film so that he, as to not get him in trouble. Uh, this actually was filmed during the um, regime of the junta that largely included people who were involved with the cover-up of the assassination of this film. So it was actually filmed in Algiers mostly due to the fact that uh, it actually had a Mediterranean look. Also, they could not even set foot in Greece because I'm pretty sure that Gavras and a lot of the other people involved in production uh, would be arrested. Also, they were able to do Algiers because of the fact that this was a French production. Uh, so he, it did allow for them to um, do do films in, at the time, French-occupied Algiers. Um, so that did allow for them to recreate that area in Greece while also staying safe at that point. Because this was a fascist military regime that was currently residing in Greece and prevented this from being filmed where it actually happened. Now a couple other things about the film. The score was actually done by uh, Mikas Theodorakis and this was actually works he had already composed and written, um, mostly from the Matheson trilogy, which was the, the works he had done about the concentration camp of the same name. Uh, the Matheson trilogy actually got Theodorakis arrested um, and he was on house arrest at the time and had to basically via phone or mail approve the use of those songs as part of the soundtrack for Z. Because again, when you actually hear at the end of the film that certain music and other things are banned, he was one of those artists. So I think that is um, somewhat ironic that the person who did the score is someone who was also affected by this regime, uh, along with a host of other people who um, are both depicted in this film and not depicted in this film. Now, the cinematography, which is actually one of the shining lights of this film, uh, was actually done by Raoul Cotard. Uh, he's actually known mostly for doing works with um, Jean-Luc Godard and Francois Truffaut. Um, so he's very heavily connected with the French New Wave um, with his cinematography and he actually wound up doing another film with Costa Gavras, The Confession, 
which will be the next video in this series. One other fun fact about this film, uh, this was actually screened by the Black Panther Party, uh, and they felt that it was actually a very necessary piece of anti-fascist work, to the point where they actually screened it at the United Front Against Fascism conference in uh, its same, the same year the film was actually released. Uh, so this is a historical and strong piece of anti-fascist art, uh, which again, something I personally can relate to. So, uh, and it is a great film, which again, we're gonna get more into in a second, but uh, going into the background of the film. Now, before we delve into the actual events, the main, main events that inspired uh, the story, um, there are other events that are attached to this film as well. Uh, one of which, one of which is Mehdi Ben Barka, whose disappearance is something that Costa Gavras actually did admit did play a little bit of part in the story for Z. Um, there are rumors that it might be connected to the JFK assassination. Um, some felt that it had a similar look to the Zapruder film, um, but at most points, Costa Gavras has admitted that he did not see the Zapruder film. Um, prior to filming Z. Um, so any connection to the Zapruder film or the JFK assassination are purely coincidental. The main thing that this movie is about is the assassination of Gregoris Lambrakis, a, um, a Greek politician who, while he was not leftist or as leftist or communist as a lot of the people who were probably at the rally or organizing the rally, uh, he was a pacifist like um, the people in that party, so there was a common ground. The opposition to him were a ultra-right-wing group in the military who, after the events of this film, were removed from their posts and then eventually, um, before any elections could happen, actually seized the country in a coup d'etat and for around a decade were the ruling class in Greece at the time. And which, again, was rough for a lot of people um, in the arts, in the intellectual community. And it's, again, this is where, or at least part of where you can compare things to now. Um, Anti-intellectualism, uh, being against the arts, two things that actually contradict the um, ultra right wing or fascist ideals. Um, especially art. The art is always going to be a protest piece against um, the ultra-right or fascist regimes. And usually a lot of what, um, a lot of the propaganda spewed out by those groupings are typically debunked by the intellectuals. So um, if, if you look at what's going on now in certain regions of the world, including the US and including other countries who are having a similar uh, even Greece again, actually, with the Golden Dawn, um, those are having similar situations repeat themselves, and the people involved in those groups are very anti-intellectual, very anti-art, um, and then anyone who's protesting against them are being met with counter-protest, and that include violence, uh, it's funny because they do actually have a scene in Z with the people like rat doing a rally before the speech and they are attacked by um, people who are more uh, working with that far right group uh, who are at that point backed up by the police as well, uh, which is something you can actually draw a parallel to with the current Black Lives Matter protests that are going on um, with the counter protesters and to the, the people protesting against the Black Lives Matter or anti-fascist side who are actually being aided by the police as well. So it's something that is a striking parallel right now. Going back to the film itself, uh, it's about the assassination of the doctor uh, who is based on mainly Gregoris Lambrakis, but also um, Ben Barca. And he does his speech, he gets assassinated, and that's the first half of the movie, but the way they do it draws a great amount of attention, which again, I'm going to uh, get into a little more in depth in a second. And then what follows is the subsequent cover-up and exposure of the cover-up 
of that assassination because it's made to look like it was just a drunk driver hitting him, but it wasn't, and it was state-sanctioned, and once it got out, had a lot of egg for the people in said state. Again, to the point where they dropped out of their positions, but then did a coup d'etat and took over the country. Now, the films about different events by Costa Gavras, they actually do have different reasons why they draw you in. This feels like you're watching a documentary at times. Um, whether it be the shaky cam, um, it's the way certain camera angles are done to make it look like you are actually a fly on the wall in the room during these events. Um, and the way it actually heightens the tense, the tense nature of the lead up to the assassination, because you know that that's going to happen. You know when it's going to happen, but you're still on the edge of your chair or couch, uh, wherever you're watching it, uh, waiting to see what's going to happen. And they actually do a fake out when someone who the, um, ultimately the killer of the Lambracas character, um, sees someone who they think is Le the doctor in there, um, goes, kills the man, realizes he's got the wrong guy, and then goes back on his, um, on his work, like his grocery courier uh, truck, um, to go actually do the deed. Um, the, the scene right before where the doctor leaves his like cocoon of protection to go and call out the police and the, pro the, uh, anti-pacifist protesters is actually a striking image before the actual death blow. Um, the, and what I like is they actually do give a human portrayal for both the doctor and his wife, um, in this. What I also really like is the portrayal of the investigator, the um, the magistrate, so to speak. He is played as not really agreeing politically with that left-wing group, but realizing he has a job to do. So even though he might not agree with everything that the victim said, he's also not going to just not do his job because he didn't agree with the person who was assassinated. And the second he saw that there's something fishy. He investigated that lead with the help of a photojournalist, um, both of whom are based on real people, both of whom faced blowback once the junta took over Greece um, shortly after the events of the fi that the film depicts. So the writing and the pacing are great in this film. Uh, the cinematography by Pittard is actually top notch. Uh, I do, I love the performances from the actors in this film. Um, I mean, Yves Montat as a doctor, he's one of the best actors in the in France from that time period. And he's actually in most of the films in this collection and playing a prominent role. Um, actually, I... Actually, I, uh, I think he... Uh, plays a guy who's either assassinated or tortured to the brink of death uh, in all of the films. Because um, I know he's the doctor in this. He's the agent who gets killed in State of Siege. And he's mainly tortured in the confession. But I do kind of find it funny that he played those roles and played all three powerfully. Um, again, as far as a film and its legacy, I do think that this is one that uh, definitely deserves to stand up as one of the best political films out there uh, of all time. Uh, again, it, it does keep you like at the edge of your seat. It does hammer home the message. And honestly, of the political films that I've seen lately from that era, uh, it's one of the ones that can be adaptable to now. So, uh, and I do think that gives it that extra hint of staying power um, because it is so raw and visceral that it can match up to a lot of these protests going on now and other protests that have happened in the past that have involved um, blowback from the opposition. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Letterboxd, at HipsterPunchy. Um, uh, the next video I'm going to do is going to be about the Barnes & Noble sale coming up, so be ready for that. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Um, again, check out Dice Cave Pooh's channel. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I will see you with some hints about the Criterion sale coming up in a couple days. Have a good one, guys.